Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to a weekly reading vlog. It's been a minute since I've done one of these, so we're just gonna jump right into it. Excuse the glow of the face, excuse the hair. We just took the dogs for a walk and it was humid. We're in Kentucky, it's summer, it's hot. So a couple of things before I jump into the things that I've been reading this week, which are limited, if I'm perfectly honest with you. I have a couple of unbox- well, I have one unboxing to do and I have one thing to show you that I already unboxed because I got a package from a publisher in the mail that I honestly was not expecting. So I didn't really want to unbox it on camera and be like, oh, thanks, in case it was something that like, I don't know, I've gotten weird, weird books in the mail before. So anyway, this was not that case. So I'm just going to show you and I'm still going to be excited about it because I literally just opened it. Um, but you girl got a hard copy arc of Shipwrecked. Um, you guys know I have loved this series since I started reading it. Has it been a year already? That doesn't seem right. Maybe at the beginning of this year? I'm not really sure when I first read- so I read Spoiler Alert sometime last year. I had an e-arc of all the feels that I read at the beginning of this year, maybe in January, and then I also was sent uh, an e-arc of Shipwrecked, which I have already read and I absolutely adored. So when I got a notification from UPS saying that there was a publisher mail package thing coming, if the angle is different, I'm sorry. You guys are very precariously positioned right now and my whole phone just fell off and that's what I get for being too lazy to like really set up my stuff for this for this vlog, but it's fine. Anyway, so uh, back to Shipwrecked. I, I read this earlier this year. The publisher had sent me an e-arc of it and when I got the notification, I didn't really think it was going to be anything. Ember, I swear to God, if you knock the phone off again, we're gonna have words. And I opened it because I didn't know what was going to be in it because I didn't know what HarperCollins could possibly have been sending me. And it's, it's this beauty. I adored this book. Um, I think that I might have said when I read it in my review that it was pretty much tied for me with Spoiler Alert because I loved, loved Spoiler Alert. Um, I really enjoyed all the feels too, but I just didn't have the same feeling about it. I loved all three books, but I didn't have the same feeling about it that I did about Spoiler Alert and Shipwrecked and guys. This made my whole week. If I'm being perfectly honest, it made me want to reread it all over again. If you don't know, this is a series about um, actors who portray characters in a movie called Gods of the Gates. No, it's a TV show. In a very um, Game of Thrones-like way, there's a series of books. This is an adaptation based on those books that in the beginning was wildly popular, but then once they ran out of source material, the creators started effing things up. So this is pretty much the same thing. So the first one follows Marcus. I don't remember her name off the top of my head, but she's a plus-size cosplayer, and she's like also a soil scientist, which is pretty cool. And they kind of get thrown together when people start hating on her for her plus-size cosplays and portrayals of a certain character from the show and Marcus is trying to show his like solidarity on Twitter for somebody doing that and so he was like throwing his support behind her and like kind of asks her out to dinner and it turns into this like publicity maybe fake it starts as fake dating and then it turns into real dating really really quick so that's the rundown on spoiler alert and it was amazing book two follows a different actor from the show um, and book three, both of them are actually actors in the show, and it's adorable. It's so good. <sighs> anyway, that's the end of my little rave about this entire series. It's just such good, feel-good, spicy, steamy romance. If you guys have not read this, and if you love, like, fan culture and, like, that kind of thing, in the first two, it's like... The regular person dates a celebrity trope. This is obviously two celebrities dating each other. It's so good. Moving on, because I can only talk about this for so long before I lose your guys' interest. Next up is something that has been sitting around on my coffee table for a couple of days because I didn't know where to unbox it for you guys. This one I did wait for, and it's the next Broken Binding box. This is the next book in the Ninth Rain series. So you guys watched me unbox the last one last month, which was the Ninth Rain is the name of that book. Uh, this one is The Poison Song. 
Why Can I Not- The Winnowing Flame, that's the name of the series. So that is the Broken Bindings current trilogy that they are doing special editions of once per month, and they always package everything so beautifully on the inside, so let me just grab this out. And you know that nothing's ever going to happen the way that they wrap it in bubble wrap, so let me cut to after the bubble wrap so that you guys don't have to listen to this. They make it like a little present, and it always comes with a cute- oh, the Bitter Twins. I don't know what I'm talking about. The Poison Song, I think, is the third one. Anyway, they always come with this cute bookmark. You guys can see it there. It's the Bitter Twins, and on the back it says, This pain is not a weakness, it is strength, our grief binds us. So, that is the cute little bookmark that they have included this time. And they put the Winnowing Flame sticker, just so you know which series you're buying from, I guess. Just to unwrap. On the one hand, I hate to, like, do that because the bow is so pretty. Okay. Isn't it so pretty? So this is book two. Let's look at the edges and admire how beautiful and orange they are really quick. And it's like kind of an embossed um, dust jacket. It is also foiled on the naked hardcover that is in fact a dragon. It is exactly as stunning in person as it looks like it would be on camera. It's beautiful. Um, it's got, I think the end papers match the end papers in the ninth reign. And then it's also signed and numbered which is awesome that's one of the things that they're doing for these uh book box like subscription series that they're doing and i also just checked because my copy of ninth rain was like sitting over in the corner it is the same number for both books which is really cool i don't really know if that has any significance or not but like as a book collector like that's pretty awesome and don't they look so nice together i want to see what the naked hardcovers look like right next to each other because if they're as pretty as i think they'll be i might just leave them like naked on the shelf instead of keeping the dust jackets on. I ended up doing that with my special editions of Crescent City too because my Crescent City 1, I have the tour edition of the US tour edition of Crescent City 1 which came with a dust jacket and the UK edition didn't and then the special edition of like the tour edition of Crescent City 2 doesn't come with a dust jacket so like I think it's kind of stupid that they didn't make them match so they match more if you take the dust jacket off that has absolutely nothing to do with these books obviously anyway Ooh, okay with the shiny it'll be hard to figure out like what they are you know but do I care I don't know that I care they look so nice right next to each other we might keep them like that. We'll see. So that is the other unboxing that I had to do. Other than that, let's talk about what I've been reading so far for the Magical Readathon. The answer is not much. I have only started one book for the Magical Readathon because I have been reading The Shadow of What Was Lost. I'm still on the audiobook of this. I know that I said that in my wrap-up that I did, my July wrap-up. It's been slow going because a lot of the first like half, maybe even three quarters, just felt a little bit slow. And then the last bit has finally ramped up all the action. Everybody's back together. So I'm somewhere around like 600 pages into this book. I'm way further than I thought. Uh, I listened to it most of the day at work today and I only have like two hours of the audiobook at le left. Uh, but that's way less than two hours of reading time for me. So I honestly might try and wrap this up tonight because... I need to get a move on on my Magical Readathon TBR. It's going very, very slowly for me right now. So um, anyway, what I'm thinking about this, I am really enjoying it um, for the first, like, I think we'll go with 50%. There were parts that I was more into than others. There were parts that I was like, okay. Hi, Amber. There were parts that I was okay with letting, like, the audiobook pass me by. I don't know if anybody else does that, but, like, that's one way that I listen to books that don't like 100% have me fully invested in them is that I just like listen to it and catch what I can but if I miss something I'm not too worried about like going back and rewinding so that I can hear every single thing um and that's kind of how the first 50% went which some parts left me a little confused I don't know if this is like some kind of taboo thing to do when you're listening to an audiobook but it's how I get through books that I'm not like 100% invested in but I liked it like I enjoyed the characters there was just like a lot of stuff going on at once that couldn't like will fully hold my attention 24-7. Finally, I think maybe yesterday or today, I passed the 50% mark. 
and it really started coming together. Things really started happening. Davion was finally learning more about his powers. I didn't even talk about what this was about. So I'm reading this because John loved it, first of all. Uh, I've heard a lot of people that I watch on booktube really, really like enjoying this series, but John read this before me and he really, really loved it. He's on the second book right now. And essentially you're following three different characters. Davion is kind of the main, main character. He is a character in this world that if you have magic, you're sent to a school and the use of that magic is restricted. But if you have that magic and you cannot pass the test showing you can control it, you become something called a shadow, which kind of blocks off your ability to use this magic. And he's really worried that that's going to happen, but the night before he's supposed to take this test, somebody approaches him and kind of saves him from that and sends him off on a quest somewhere else. Um, and his friend Weir decides to join him on that. And so they kind of run off from the school together, leaving behind their friend Asha, who is the third POV. The third, well, there's not really three POV, there's more than three POVs, but a third POV who is going through some stuff of her own. I can't really talk about it without spoiling it. So they all kind of go their separate ways and blah, blah, blah. I finally have gotten to the part of the book where they come back together, which is always the part that I like the most in these things. So we're there now. I'm 100 pages or so from the end, maybe less. No, I'm, I'm about I'm about 100 pages or so from the end. Um, and I'm really, really liking it. It's giving me solid like four star vibes right now just because it took me so long to get invested in the first place. But I'm enjoying it and hopefully we'll finish this tonight and then I can really get a move on on my Magical Readathon TBR. In terms of that, I have finally started a book from the TBR that I had set, and that is Engines of Empires by R.S. Ford. Um, I'll pop a picture of it in the corner. You guys know how it goes, and I am not far into this at all. Um, maybe 10%. I'm kind of just still meeting the characters, honestly. Um, there's not really much to say on this so far. You guys can see all of the fur that Ember is depositing on me as she's just standing in front of me. So far we've met, I think, three different points of view from the same family. First one, her name is escaping me, but it starts with a T. She's the daughter and she kind of doesn't want the responsibility that being the daughter of like the leader of this particular family is going to give her. She doesn't want the responsibility of having to lead her own section of it. You follow her younger brother, full, full something, full something. I don't remember his name either. And uh, he is kind of struggling with the fact that he's learning to be kind of like an artificer mixed with a swordsman, but the swordsman piece of his education is kind of frowned upon by his mom. And he has his reasons for wanting to become a master swordsman. And then I've also followed a point of view from the mom herself and kind of just seen what's going on as the family is kind of getting ready to split up and go all of their own individual ways. Um, haven't really seen much in the way of the magic system yet. They've introduced the concept of something called a path stone. I can't tell if the path stone is just like a gemstone that you can like infuse with magic maybe or something along those lines. The daughter can control it. Apparently this ability is rare. That's about as far as I've gotten. Um, I'm interested. I'm definitely not uninterested in it, but yeah. Other than that, I think that after I finish The Shadow of What Was Lost, which is not on my TBR at all, my plan is to either pick up Monstrous, so I can bang this out of the way early and hopefully see the necromancy elements in it, because if there aren't any necromancy elements, then this will not have gone on my TBR for any reason, and I'm going to have to pick something else that does in fact have some kind of undead necromancy stuff. Um, and after I finish this, I'm finally going to move on to Master of Iron, which I probably won't talk about in this vlog because I do have a planned vlog for this by itself, just because I did get sent this by uh, the publisher and so I just kind of want to give it a little bit of special attention. And I did really, really enjoy the first book, so we'll do a special vlog just for this one alone. But yeah, um, I think that's the only updates that I have for you guys. I don't really have much in the way of reading going on. It's been going pretty slowly. You guys, if you've watched my last few videos, you know exactly why. I don't really need to keep reiterating it, but I am not in a slump. I am just slowing way, way down, I think is the best way to phrase that. So... It is what it is. Also, a lot of my weekend reading time that I would have dedicated to reading 
John and I instead spent playing Gloomhaven a lot of this past weekend. We got it as like an anniversary present to ourselves and got immediately hooked on it. So we stayed up way too late on Friday night playing it. We stayed up way too late on Saturday night playing it. And on Sunday, we got together with a couple of friends online and played our other favorite board game, which has like a Steam edition, and that's called Scythe. So we were playing that, and then we switched over to the Steam edition of Gloomhaven as well. And John and I played that last night. So there's been a lot more gaming than usual in my time that I am utilizing. I'm not mad about it. They're all, they're like both very interesting games and John and I have been enjoying spending our time doing that together. Um, but yeah, it, there has not been a lot of reading happening for me or TV watching or anything. I'm in like a weird story consuming mood, I guess you could say. And uh, I don't know, my, my brain is kind of switching between things pretty quickly. So this has been the longest update that I think that I've ever given. I will talk to you guys when I have something else to say. Okay, so we're back in this super precarious position to talk about a couple of things that I've read. I finally finished The Shadows of What Was Lost um, yesterday? Two days ago. Yesterday, I think. Um, I probably have to go back and reread a little bit of it because I've been listening to the audiobook of it and I was listening to it on my drive home from work and honestly that was the worst commute of my entire life. Like the rain was coming down so hard that I was so focused on that that I was not focused on what was going on so I like got general ideas of what was happening in the epilogue which was a lot. A lot was happening in the epilogue. Uh, so, I mean, I liked it. I ended up giving it four stars. A lot of plot twists kind of happening there in the last few minutes, and I think that I missed the general idea of some of the things that happened. Like, I had to run it by John, and then I was like, okay, I think it's clear that I need to go back and reread a little bit. But it is finished, technically. So I did end up reading a little bit of Engines of Empire last night, I think. I didn't get very far. I maybe read, like, two pages before, before I, like, really needed to go to sleep. So, um, no real updates there. I am over 10% of the way through it now, but it is my slowest go right now. I did, however, start and finish another book on my Magical Readathon TBR. This is a little bit of a switch up, kind of, I guess, because I had said I was going to read The Bone Ships and I couldn't find an audiobook for it. Um, but I did find an audiobook for Nettle and Bone, so I decided to do that one instead. Um, Bone Ships is still going to happen. John still really wants me to read it, but it's just not happening right this moment. So, Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. Wow. I started and finished this book today, and honestly, I didn't really know how I was going to feel about it in the beginning. It had, like, a really atmospheric, lyric-y kind of vibe to it in the beginning, and it was starting to give me uh, the Bear and the Nightingale vibes, like, just for, like, the first couple of chapters that I was listening to. Just that, like, really fairy tale esque like, atmospheric kind of thing, and I did not like the Bear and the Nightingale, so I was a little concerned about how this was going to go. I guess I should have trusted the process because I was like half-heartedly listening to it while I was at work, but it's like a nine-hour audiobook and I was on two speeds, so it didn't take as long. And by 30% of the way through, after I got through the exposition of like how she got where she was, oh boy, I was in. That book was so good. Full five stars. The fairy tale thing kind of held on to the end. It was definitely like a I don't know, kind of more like a campy fairy tale esque vibe instead of like your ethereal. I don't even know if I'm getting this across the right way, but it was it was funny, and it felt like I had a group of characters that were I don't know in like a comedy almost. It wasn't that funny, but like there were comedic moments, and just making mistakes across this fairy tale land, for lack of a better way to describe it. So okay, let's back up. Nettle and Bone is a book about a character whose name is Mara? I want to say that it's Mara. Could be wrong. She is one of three princesses uh, who have been promised off to princes in other countries. The first, well, I guess a prince in another country. So the first sister, um, whose name I don't remember, she married this prince and she died via accident, we all think. Uh, so the second in line sister is supposed to go off and marry him now, not instead, because the first one married him. So like, it's now her turn, I guess, to go and marry him. So the second sister goes off and they don't really, she doesn't really have a great relationship with Mara. I think it's because she thinks that Mara is like safe from this 
marriage kind of a thing because Mara is like off. I could be saying her name totally wrong. I really hope that her name is Mara. Mara is at like this convent and she doesn't fully plan to like take her vows to become a nun, but like that's what she's there learning to do pretty much. And so the second sister goes off and marries this prince and she starts pretty much being forced to pop out babies. It was like a little bit traumatic. There's a couple of trigger warnings in there for all of the shit that she goes through for like domestic abuse and uh, indications of rape. It doesn't actually describe the rape, but it does hint that it is exactly what's happening. And so essentially Mara finds out that her sister is being mistreated um, and beat by her husband and she decides to come up with a plan to free her from him and that is going to involve murdering him, which is delightful. So the book opens on her crafting a dog skeleton back together and it comes to life and it becomes like I think they call it bone dog through the entire story bone dog is a delight uh best one of the best animal companions even though it's like an undead animal companion like one of the best ones that I have read I adored that little dog so much um and she kind of stumbles across a couple of other characters that she drags along on her journey that join her group on the way and it was just the cutest standalone. Like this book has been blowing up all over like book talk and booktube lately and I finally had decided like okay I am and I finally had decided it was time for me to do it. I had gotten an ebook of it not that long ago and then my library hold on it expired so I never got around to it but I finally did and I have regrets that I didn't read it sooner because I just I just loved it that much. So yeah full five stars um and that was my reading day so far. I still need to read Engines of Empire. I think that I might be moving on to Master of Iron next. I may hold off on that for later because that is, like I said, it's a separate vlog. So we'll see. I might hold off. Um, I do still have to read Monstrous and I also still have to read Her Majesty's Royal Coven. So there's a couple of options. Uh, I haven't really decided which one I'm picking up next. I think I have the Master of Iron audiobook via Scribd that I can read if I want to do that. But we'll see. Anyway, for right now, I'm gonna go work out on the treadmill really quick and make dinner and figure out what I'm going to end up reading later at some point, hopefully. But that's it for this update. back to this setup because well I don't know we'll we'll see how this goes I know that it's crooked I'm sorry it's just going to have to get you're just gonna have to handle it anyway um so to wrap up this vlog which I should have done two days ago and I did not do I have done a lot of reading um so I think the last time that I talked to you guys I finally finished the shadows of what was lost which is great I am still working on engines of empire by rs ford I am probably 20% of the way in now and I am focusing a lot more of my attention on it but I, I'm into it I'm I'm very interested things are finally starting to pick up I'm enjoying the family that we're following I'm enjoying the characters that we're following and I am liking what I where it's going. I'm enjoying Tyrita, who is the daughter who has been going through some stuff. She has just been like uh, attacked, I guess we'll say, and is kind of fending for herself with uh, people that she's not fully comfortable with, for lack of a better way to phrase that. Ulrin, I think is the younger brother's name. He is kind of dealing with uh, some treasonous accusations and then the other brother Connell is uh, kind of away at war trying to fight on a battlefront kind of situation and he got news of all of the shit that's happening at home and it's a whole mess. So um, yeah that's pretty much where I'm at maybe 20% of the way through really starting to like where it's going it's kind of starting to really pick up and I will probably update you guys if I do another one of these vlogs next this week this week it's Tuesday I this is way too late I did finish a book since the last time I talked to you and that is Praise by Sarah Kate this was just a random recommendation that I scrolled through I think somebody had posted a TikTok onto Instagram and I was very interested because it had a lot of the romance tropes that I do enjoy like boss secretary there age gap is not something that I generally enjoy but I enjoyed this one um it was kind of awkwardly her ex-boyfriend's dad which I think is kind of similar to a Penelope Douglas book that I haven't read but everybody talks about anyway 
irrelevant. Praised by Sarah Kate, you follow Charlotte and Emerson, and Charlotte is the main girl. She is kind of down on her luck, and her ex-boyfriend is, like, a terrible person, and she needs the security deposit from the apartment that they shared, and it went to his dad's house because his dad co-signed on the apartment with them, and he won't go get it because he's not speaking to his dad, so she goes to get it because she needs the money, and he hires her as his secretary, and he is a CEO of a, I think they call it the Sensual Players Club, Salacious, Salacious Players Club, which is kind of like a hedonistic, I don't want to call it a sex club, but it's kind of along those lines. It was an interesting, it was, de uh, it, it's not my usual romance that I read, but I was really into it. I really liked the storylines. And I really liked the characters, and it was really, really steamy, and I think that I enjoyed it. I ended up giving it five stars, I'm gonna say, I think? I don't really remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure it ended up being a five-star read. Um, I devoured it in one day, yesterday, actually. I read the whole thing yesterday. So, I don't know that I'm going to care too much about the rest of the series, because it was kind of just a one-off thing for me, but as far as that story goes, I, I enjoyed it immensely. And that is the extent of my reading. So I have completed two things for the Magical Readathon so far. At least one thing. I've completed at least one thing for the Magical Readathon, which is something with Bone in the title, because I read Nettle and Bone this week, and I absolutely adored that. So uh, if I can find something there that praise would fit into, I might try and do that. But I don't know that it would fit into any of those categories, so we'll save that as like a last minute change if I need to use it for something at the end, but we'll see. Anyway, so that is the extent of my first, well, it's the second week of the Magical Readathon, but it's the first week that I actually accomplished anything for it. So that's the extent of my reading this week. How have your guys' first couple of weeks of Magical Readathon went? I haven't really heard too many people talking about it, but I've also kind of been a little bit out of touch with the whole thing since it started. I've just kind of been quietly participating in my own corner. But uh, yeah, I, let me know how you guys have been doing in Magical Readathon so far down in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps out my channel. And down in the description box, you're going to see a couple of rep codes for Hello Lovely and Unplugged Book Box. That is Ember shaking my camera because she likes to do that. And down in my description box are links to my Goodreads, my Twitter, and my Instagram in case you guys wanted to follow me on any of those. But that's it for me today, guys. So I'll talk to you in my next one. Bye! Thank you.